What's going on everybody? It's your boy Payne. Welcome back to another DC Heroes and Villains video. Okay guys, today we're going to talk about some of the unreleased units that I have in my roster that were in the beta version but are no longer available to global players but will be returning eventually, most likely as additional featured units like Aquaman here that you can summon for. Now we have a few of them and I want to talk about them. I want to go through their kits, their skills, how good they are. There is a tier list that I created. They are all on the tier list, by the way, uh, and whether they're worth the wait and who you should be saving your gems for. Okay, so we're going to talk about the ones that are currently unavailable, and that's going to be Blue Beetle from Teen Titans, Beast Boy from T T Teen Titans, uh, The Flash from JLA, or it might be just Justice League, not JLA, just JL. Um, we have Paris, oh, Raven as well from the Teen Titans right here, so TT. Uh, and then we have, I believe, you guys are also missing li Livewire and Parasite. So if I go down here, Livewire, as you can see, here is only level one, but I've used her in the actual um, choice choice missions, so e easy to talk about. Uh, and actually, a decent unit. And then Parasite is the last one, who's actually a really, really good tank, uh, and is also missing here. And, and a much needed um, buffer tank addition to the game and I'll explain to you why he's so good okay so let's start off with the the ones that most people are going to care about and that's going to be the hero versions of the characters okay and I'm going to use them for you in a battle here uh, actually let's go to assault because I have a couple a couple assault missions I need to do here 404 so I'll go ahead and create the team for you guys you guys can kind of take a look and see how this team works and how they function and why they're pretty damn good okay so it's going to be mostly comprised of blue beetle beast boy and I'll put in raven Actually, I'll keep Ivy in. I'll take Riddler out. Uh, Raven. Okay, so you can see here, Teen Titans, right? The only other Teen Titan that's missing here is Robin, and he's absolute garbage, so we're not going to bother with that. But you can see here, these three are really, really good. So let's talk a little bit about their kit before I actually jump into the battle and explain to you guys why these units are so damn good. So let's actually throw in, uh, let's throw in Waller for this one, okay? So here, Raven first. Okay, so... Her passive, at the start of the battle, each time Raven performs a power move, which is really weird that they even put that in there. I don't know. It's just just to say each time Raven performs a power move, grants immunity. Uh, oh, sorry, and each time. So it actually starts. My mistake. So it's actually both. At the start of the battle, she gives Teen Titan members immunity for two turns, and every time she performs a power move, she gives immunity for two turns. The word is just a little weird. Maybe it's my, it's just in the morning, I haven't had enough coffee. Uh, so all Teen Titans get immunity. That's why it's really good to have Blue, Blue Beetle and um, Beast Boy with her. Immunity right from the start and every time she does a power move. She also grants heal over time buff to all Teen Titan allies for one turn as well. Uh, and that is actually very useful because as an off healer and as a DPS and as a buffer and as a debuffer, she fills all roles really well. Raven is a unit that you definitely want to go for, okay? So like I mentioned, she has an AoE, which is an attack all enemies, so area area of effect, AoE. Damage multiplier is 66%, so not a very hard hitting move, it's not meant to be, but it does actually offer two things. Inflicts defense down, debuff for three turns, which is 40% uh, down on defense, and then anti-heal as well too. So anyone who's a healer, especially for PvP and bosses that heal, this move here is going to stop them from healing. So a very, very good unit, very powerful unit, especially when paired with the likes of these guys here okay now going to blue, blue beetle he's unique in a couple sense a couple reasons and the reason why he's unique mostly is because he's an anti-stealth dps buffer okay so by anti-stealth this is what he does at the start of each turn blue beetle has a 30 percent chance to remove stealth buff from one random enemy if stealth buff buff was removed from the the enemy then the enemy gets vulnerability debuff for two turns so units like joker who go to stealth after a certain point. Units like Huntress, who gets stealth after uh, getting hit. Cheshire, who goes stealth as well too from getting hit. So these units are all units that are going to be harder to kill because what stealth does, if you don't know, is if you don't take stealth out, the, the damage that's supposed to go directly to that enemy will actually transfer over to another enemy on the field. So it makes it more difficult to kill them, right? And by having stealth and then adding vulnerability as a layer makes it a lot easier uh for you guys to actually kill them and makes it easier for um uh those units to be targeted right obviously so next up we have his special which is attack a single target with one hit damage multiplier is 126 percent so fairly high generate a barrier on all allies equal to 15 percent of his max hp and the barrier is actually very useful sometimes you don't even need a tank when you have him so blue beetle as a four star is one of the most sought out four stars 
in the game uh, and this is the reason why he's an anti-stealth and he's a great barrier character plus adding vulnerability every time he reduces it a little more niche than be someone like beast boy but he's still really good you know what actually i'm gonna take amanda waller out i'm gonna put flash in so i can show you guys flash as well all right so let's talk about beast boy now who i think is probably the best tank in the game still to date and there's a couple of reasons why he's not anything unique in terms of what he brings from his kit but he is the highest hp pool and the hardest hitting aoe tank in the game one of the only aoe tanks in the game which makes him incredible for all content pvp challenges and story mode right so if you look at his passive here at the start of the battle he actually does do taunt right away for two turns which makes it easier for you to survive he also fills the power gauge of all allies by 10 percent or 15 percent if you use team titan so that right away gives you the edge and advantage from building up your special so it's great for slower units like waller uh, to get her up and running quicker so right away those boosts are massive and you can see here as you increase his uh his um, dupes, you will get yourself up to, I believe it's a 14% here and 21% uh, here. Yeah, 21%, I believe. So really, really good passive for a tank to start with. Also, the power move here, like I said, he does actually have a pretty decent AoE damage deal. It's, it goes up to 120%, and then he also does a taunt for two turns. So pretty straightforward tank, nothing out of the ordinary here, but he does bring a lot of HP, and he does his job better than anybody else, in my opinion, so far in the game. Uh, so absolutely outside of, uh, for an AoE tank, and actually one with a high HP pool and a good passive, He's one of the best out there, okay? And then let's talk about the Flash real quick. Now, Flash is the only unit here that has a mass AoE buff uh, for haste, and his passive is decent. Each time an ally performs a power move, there's a 50% chance they'll convert a random tile into a red tile. So amazing with a red team like Cersei, Wonder Woman, etc. He works really well with them. Uh, and then more importantly, right here, attacks all enemy, hits three times. I've done a full showcase on him, guys, so if you want to see him in action by himself, full explanation, you can. Uh, damage of the multiplier is only 12%. You can see here it goes up only by two and two or by two here sorry so 14 percent hits them three times so i mean you're getting a total of 36 percent damage which is not a lot but it's not meant to be the main reason why is he grants haste on, on all the allies for two turns which is huge that's 33 33 percent more um power gauge increase and then at the same time he has a 50 percent chance to launch a red tile so launching a red tile essentially is getting a red tile from the board and launching it up at an enemy doing extra damage okay so that's kind of the purpose of that so let's go ahead and use these guys in battle you guys can kind of take a look now i won't use parasite and live wire because i haven't used them but i will talk about them real quick after so you guys get an idea of how they work all right so here's how this is going to function you ideally want to get uh so you see beast boy did taunt right there you ideally want to get flash going first uh, that's usually how most of these games are going to run. It's going to be through his special. Now, I know I put him in the tier list and he's really high up in the tier list and he has every reason to be. Uh, but you can see here, look how fast he builds that. So him and Cheetah together, guys, another incredibly good, powerful combination of units that you may want to consider using. If he can put haste on Cheetah before she puts haste on herself, she gets so many super bars so quick. Look at that. That looks like us two full ones. And here, one, two, three. You guys can see here, everybody has now the haste buff. I'll show you guys real quick. There's the haste buff right there. It fills gauge by 33% more. Uh, and then what you want to do here now is build uh, the barrier for Blue Beetle right there. So watch, I'll show you guys. There you go. Everyone has barrier now. Poison Ivy can just go ahead and heal, right? And now you can do Beast Boy here, get him max, and then get Raven. So let's do Raven first. Everyone who didn't, who actually got hit lost defense, defense down. So there you go, defense down, defense down. And then you guys can go ahead and do some more of this to build them up. Do flash again. And look how quickly flash, flash hits things. Like, super fast. Like I said, it's like a, it's like a, considered a boxing jab, not a knockout, right? Okay, so there's that. Let's get this. So you can see Raven, I'm fighting another Raven, so defense down is going to happen to me as well. But look at, look at this HP pool. He barely gets damaged at all, right? So here, do this. Fucking copper, excuse my language, copperhead. Um... Gotta love Copperhead, man. I can't hate. I love I love the character. So, so look at that dodge, dodge, dodge. Like it's crazy how many times he just dodge because I have accuracy down now, right? It's such a dangerous combination. People are sleep. I made a showcase for Copperhead, and people are still sleeping on him. I'm telling you guys, use him. Okay, there we go. Beast Boy again. You see that massive AOE? Now I'm gonna barrier everybody here. So again, a healer's not even required really with barrier. Look at that. everybody gets it. Do green one here. Do Raven again. Okay, you guys can see here, not losing much HP, right? Flash kills off. Ivy will finish that off. There you guys have it. 
fairly straightforward battle very easy to complete uh all four units are incredible by the way uh so if, I, if, I, if you were to prioritize it if you run a, if you want to run a full heavy um team titan team raven is essential because she does so much for that team in terms of buffing uh beast boy is essential because he gives the power gauge of course to the team titans at a higher percentage and then of course blue beetle giving you the barrier making it a lot easier to survive with a team like that so those are the team those are the guys i would go for as the main four as you can see here right now currently in game the villains are what much better than the heroes but with those three or four units coming out with with flash um raven beast boy and uh and blue beetle it evens out the playing field with villains versus heroes now real quick i want to talk about these two so livewire here she's actually a very fast character she does have the ability that aquaman has with the less damage obviously she attacks all enemies and actually has a way to remove all buff from the targets very good move but very weak aquaman does like insane damage so the two of them obviously are much different uh she does have the ability to do dodge up on herself and fills her power gauge for two uh for by 15 percent so she can do this quite often and can be a big big headache for a lot of people in pvp so she's more of a pvp unit and then parasite is probably one of the best tanks in the game so every time he removes a buff from a single enemy and applies it to himself uh attack target one time damage multiplier is 90 percent self heal for 50 percent of the battle and has a taunt for three turns so incredible tank and his passive is really good each time parasite receives a buff he has a 50 percent chance to gain one percent defense bonus each time parasite inflicts uh a new debuff he has a is a Inflicted by a new debuff, sorry, he has a 50% chance to gain one attack bonus. There is no ceiling for this, by the way. It can increase unlimited. If he stays alive, he's impossible to kill. So you really want to focus on killing him first. If you have him, you want to focus on him being a buffing unit or having a lot of buffing units around him, like Waller, Cersei, etc. Um, and you want him to actually get debuffed. Incredible unit, honestly. Parasite's a really, really good tank, and I highly recommend him if you get him. So there you guys have it. Hope you enjoyed the video. I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Take care.